What's up you guys, it's James with James Reptiles and today we're going to talk about best first pet reptiles. So I kind of want to break this into a couple categories here. I want to start with snakes and then we'll get into stuff in legs separately. Uh, and then we might go over amphibians a little bit. So starting with snakes, most colubrids are excellent first beginner pet reptiles. You know, uh, this right here is the California king snake. Uh, corn snakes are amazing. You know, they both, if you live in areas like I do, you don't even need heat on them. Uh, and if you do, it's just a small under tank heater, no basking lights, no light bulbs to finick with. You just plug it into the thermostat and get going. Uh, and most colubrids are pretty, pretty good eaters. Uh, I've had problems with my king snakes in the past, but most people, king snakes don't have a problem. And my corn snakes eat like pigs. Uh, Cognos, I would stick away from those just because they're finicky eaters and they are technically rear fang venomous and you just kind of want to be cautious and you kind of want to know more what you're doing and how to read body language when you get to those. But even my Vietnamese blue beetle rat snake, though a little bit more expensive, it is just as easy as a corn snake in my opinion. You know, I just All I do is I spray it down once every, one, once every week or so. But most Colubrids are pretty calm. They are a lot more active than what you would see in boa constrictors and ball pythons. But at the same time, ball pythons tend to go off feed. Boa constrictors tend to get really big. So if you're looking for a first pet reptile, I really recommend most colubrids. Now let's get into geckos. Geckos specifically, um, I'll get into lizards in just a second, but crested geckos behind me, almost anywhere you live, you don't need heat on them. Uh, just a tank like this, a glass, nice glass tank. It doesn't have to be a glass tank. You know, I've seen other stuff done, plastic tubs, whatnot. Uh, Ten gallon tanks, sure. Maybe on their side, who knows? Um, this rapache food that they eat is just a mix. You add water, and then it simulates kind of their fruit in the nature, in the nature fruit in nature that they would eat. Uh, and it's awesome because they don't have to eat insects. And I have a whole video about that right here if you want to see it. Um, but leopard geckos are also really good. Of course, under tank heater with them. Uh, they do like to hide a lot. Mealworms and crickets, super easy. Uh, you can't really mess up a leopard gecko too bad unless it ha happens to eat substrate, which even a lot of times they don't. Uh, I know what a lot of people say, but I've also seen a lot of stuff from my own eyes. Most people who keep on loose substrate don't have a problem, but you can, so just be careful. Uh, African fat tail geckos, I do keep those as well. They're basically the same as leopard geckos, just make sure you always have a human hide in there in case they want to get in and get a little bit human. Other geckos I would include on this list are morning geckos, though I've never kept these. I do know they are fairly easy. Uh, they eat the pashi mix, they like it humid just like crested geckos, and they'll even lay eggs without any mates in there. So if you kept, if you kept just one, theoretically, you could lay an egg. Uh, they're more likely to lay in groups, but they're all females, so no matter what, you're going to have some asexual reproduction in there. I would personally stay away from knobtail geckos. I know those are getting really popular in the late years, uh, and a lot of people are breeding them. They're a lot of times from Australia, but knobtail geckos uh, are very finicky. They need to be fed a lot more, need to be watered and watched a lot more carefully, and there's just not enough people who have kept them and kind of bred out that you know, if something gets bred a lot in captivity, you're likely to breed out the fact that it's just gonna die so easily. It kind of builds character, you know, people take really bad care of it and then they breed it and the babies are used to that, they can handle that. It just kind of gives them an arbor plating once they've been in the hobby for a while, like this king snake right here. To move on to lizards, I wanna talk about bearded dragons. Bearded dragons are awesome first pets, some people say. Um, it is something I've had in the past, Personally, I would not recommend it for a beginner. Maybe someone if it's their second or third animal, sure. But bearded dragons need a heat lamp and UVB, and you have to watch those bulbs and replace them every couple months. For a child whose parents are paying for it, that can add up. And especially feeding it salad every couple of days can get really annoying. And I know a lot of people might lose interest in that really quickly. Uh, blue tongue skinks, uh, they're pretty similar, except they can eat a variety of dog food. I've never personally had one, and they are per pretty uh, popular right now in the hobby, but they are also expensive, and they can pack a nice bite if, if you have an aggressive one. Smaller lizards, like a gnolls, those are pretty cool, but they're hard to come by unless they're wild caught. 
and people who are keeping them aren't really keeping them right. So there aren't many actual lizards I would recommend as first pets, but lots of other stuff. So last thing I want to go over amphibians. There are a lot of frogs that are extremely easy to keep as long as you keep the enclosure clean and moist all the time. Uh, dumpy tree frogs are one specifically. And even if you have a fish tank, African dwarf frogs, that's something I've had in the past. Those are really cool. Uh, feed them blood worms every once in a while and they're super cool. Uh, I wouldn't recommend Tinctorius, all those really colorful dart frogs. One, they can get pricey and two, there's just so much care and everyone who's doing it was doing bioactive. So to find people who are caring for them without bioactive setups and how they do it, just, just going to be hard and you might end up killing one or two and it's just going to be discouraging in the end. So if you're getting your first animal, don't think you're su super cool and try to get something awesome and try to prove everyone wrong. Start with something basic and then once you get it and you understand it, you're going to know what everyone's talking about. Maybe you get a morning gecko and it lays eggs and you can sell those babies and then you make money for your second animal and then you get something a little nicer, you get something that takes more research. And that's one thing, all these animals take research. People come up and ask me the basic questions all the time and I'll, I'll give them the answer. I'd, down to help everybody as much as I can with my uh, thoughts and things I've learned over the years. But always when I'm done, if I know it's a stupid question that they should have learned doing the research, I tell them, but don't take my word for it. Go do more research. Always, always, always research. I'm researching stuff. I'm learning stuff about animals I keep all the time. You know, so-and-so keeps it differently. Wow, how did that work? What did they do exactly? and what were the results. So this has been my list of awesome beginner reptiles for anyone who needs a new pet or if anyone is just looking to get into the hobby and get started. Uh, these are all basic stuff. Most of them are pretty inexpensive and easy to care for. We're gonna go look at some Christmas lights and you might even see new guppies in the fish tank in tomorrow's video. I will also be selling two geckos tomorrow locally, so make sure to look out for that in the video. And if you wanna see any pictures of my awesome animals, make sure to go ahead and follow me on Instagram Facebook, Twitter, uh, all that really helps out. I do want to hit 300 Instagram followers by the new year. I'm at 294 right now. My goal is 300 Instagram followers and 30 subscribers. And I hit subscribers. I hit, I'm at 31 right now. So make sure to go follow me and you won't be disappointed. You'll see lots of cool animals and other fun stuff.